We're about to learn about micros, macros, and macaroni, so it should be a good speech right here. It's early as fucking shit. I got some coffee. A little bit delirious. Let's see if you recognize this guy right now. Great candy. Just with his eyes, with his eyes covered. Does he look familiar at all? He just woke up. He's got a goddamn baseball. He's in. flat as hell. So, my boy Nigel, he brought his notepad. Kane, why so fucking jacked? He has a notepad. No goddamn notepad right here. I got nothing. I'm so underprepared right now. The the important thing that I want to go over with, with protein is that it is a source of glucose for the body. And depending on what research you look at, you can see as little as a piddly 5 to 8-ish percent all the way up to 40 to 60 percent um, of protein being converted to glucose within the body in a process called, called what? Gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis, right. Now, the, the main factors influencing protein quality, this is something that isn't talked about a whole lot, but digestibility is one of the intuitive things that you would imagine would affect protein quality. And this is another, this one is kind of non-intuitive, the non-amino acid nutrients and other cofactors within the food matrix actually do contribute to protein quality and bioavailability and synergy within the nutrient matrix and how the body is able to use protein. And then this is kind of a, a no-brainer review, the essential amino acid content of protein, especially the branch chain amino acids that will determine the quality of protein. Um, and of the BCAAs, it would be leucine, as we know, that's sort of the master uh, amino acid, the master uh, regulator of, of uh, muscle growth. Um, your, your goal, whether it's weight maintenance, gain, or loss, that influences the amount of protein that you need to take in. The training program certainly influences the amount of protein that you require. Um, whether you're training for just to maintain or, or gain, or whether it's strength, hypertrophy, endurance, anything along that, that strength, uh, strength endurance continuum, that can influence protein requirements. And certainly training status and body composition, the, those, are, those are the huge ones. And that's probably the one that I would, I would focus on is energy balance. So when somebody is in a hypocaloric state, then their protein requirements increase. And when somebody's at uh, zero balance for trying to gain, then they don't have as high of a demand for protein to uh, prevent muscle catabolism because you have other sources of energy kicking in and take, taking up the slack for that process. This right here is a cool chart that I compiled with all of the major scientific reviews and position stands within the last oh, eight to ten ish years. And you'll notice, interestingly, um, so starting at the bottom with, uh, with Wilson and Wilson, there would be a 1.2 to 2.2 grams per kilogram, and then on up towards the latest review by Eric Helms. But even if you, if, even if you don't look at, at Eric Helms' review, you notice a slight trend that kind of goes up in how much protein the sports scientists think that we need to optimize training adaptations. This is what I want you to notice about the position stands. Mainstream nutritionists and those who are stuck right about here, right there, they, they've memorized 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight. You know people like that. It's like, why are you, why are you eating you know, 2.0 or 2.2? Why are you eating a gram of protein per pound of body weight? That's, you don't need that. Well, it depends on what population you're talking about. It depends on the energy balance. It depends on the goal. Protein requirement continuum on. on the lower end. There's different uh, different characteristics of, of both sides of the continuum. So lower, once again, hypercaloric or maintenance conditions it has a lower protein requirement, and then uh, it goes higher once you're hy hypocaloric. So if you're talking about somebody who's doing light to moderate, you know, prance or size, or whatever they choke it, <laughs> <laughs> then their protein requirements are lower compared to the more rigorous progressive type of training that uh, bodybuilders and strength power athletes would do. And if you have moderate to high body fat, your protein requirement per pound of body mass is going to be lower. And certainly with, with lower body fat, that will naturally go up. What's important about what my colleague Eric Helms did was he calculated protein requirements of 
relatively lean athletes in hypoenergetic conditions, but he calculated it based on grams per, uh, per kilogram of fat-free mass. So that's a really kind of important game changer as far as the literature goes. Because the protein literature is, you know, all day long based on uh, total body mass, grams per kilogram of total body mass. And the issue with that, of course, is that um, that doesn't tell you a whole lot about what is required of the, of the muscle component. If you can attempt to do that, if you can base recommendations on lean mass um, when, you, when you issue or you know, prescribe protein requirements, then that would be ideal. But we don't always have the means or the accuracy to, to estimate a person's lean body mass. So I do it a different way. I just do it based on ideal body weight. Um, or you can call it target, target body mass or target body weight. And uh, basing protein on target body weight would, let's say, you know, a, a 300 pound person wants to weigh 180. Well, if he consumes 180 grams of protein, he's likely not going to be overdoing his protein um, for his body weight. And conversely, if somebody weighs like a buck 50 and they want to weigh 180 and they consume 180 grams of protein, well, then they'll be maxing out all avenues towards anabolism and they won't be impinging upon um, carbon fat allotments if they set their calories up right. Um, what are the comments like wondering how they came up with the numbers? Well, wait, okay. Well, more, more like moved and stretched while you, while you said that, so. <laughs> can, you, can you yell that out to me again? I have a book, a men's health branded book that's going to come out on December 23rd. It's called, it's called The Lean Muscle Diet. That's the name of the book. I fought that, man. I fought that. <laughs> I fought it and I lost. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, intramyocellular triglyceride. For the <laughs>